so uh, it was great to see all the responses to the piece that I wrote. Uh, and it's also interesting to see the, all of our different pieces in the context of an ever-changing um, Occupy movement, uh, and you know, so much has happened since we each wrote our pieces. So it's interesting to see these in the context of that. Uh, and so I guess I wanted to ask you some questions to um, elaborate on things that you said, and then also to dig a little bit deeper um, into the relevance of this idea of um, the prophets and the moralists related to um, the state of our country and, and the Occupy movement. So in the beginning, you um, you talk a little bit about how um, it's sort of ironic that my piece um, talks about the moralists as the politicians and the prophets as the people. Um, and I was wondering if you could sort of elaborate on that a little bit um, and talk about you know what that irony is and um, and what you think the relevance or what you think it potentially should be. Sure. sure. Um, um, First, I, I really I thought really you wrote a great, a great, great piece, so, so thanks for giving us a lot of meat to, to work with. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess it was really the first, first thing that struck me when I read it, was that the first word that comes to mind when I think of a politician is not a moralist, and the first word when I think of the populist as a whole is not prophet, um, because if we were either of those things, Purely, Purely, then we may not find, find ourselves in this predicament. In this predicament. Um, um, and there, and there, was there was just a, a like a funny irony to me about that. that. Um, but, but what I what I, I think, think was, was was a little bit, bit more interesting was the interplay of these two concepts, concepts and how they work together. together. Because, because maybe, maybe um, um, if one, one group was purely one and the other purely the opposite. Um, and they and don't they have don't a way, way to intersect and cross, like, cross pollinate their, their ideas. ideas. Um, um, we, might, we might, I mean, maybe, maybe that's exactly that's what happened. Maybe we find ourselves right where we are. are. Um, um, but I, I, I think I that's think what's that's so interesting that's about the Occupy movement, movement is that, that it's, it's forcing that, that cross pollination of ideas. Mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so, from your perspective, would you say that the Occupy protest um, or, or that people, actually I should say, or people, um, could have an impact on whether or not politicians find their prophetic voice? Mm -hmm. Well, well I'd, 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 I'd like, like to, to believe, believe, as a pragmatic, pragmatic idealist, idealist, that, that the, the, the people, people do have, have a role in, in the, um, the direction, direction of, of politics. politics. I think, I think it's, it's easy to forget that the politicians are people, too. Um, um, and, and, you know, that's, that's why, why they make they so many all too common human errors. errors. Um, but, um, I, but I, I, also I also think that when you're at, at the top, top it's easy to forget to hear the voices, voices of, of, of everybody. You see it in business, business, in business, in nonprofits, in, in um, families. families. I, you I see, see it everywhere. everywhere. So, so uh, uh, I, 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 I do like to think that when the people make their voices louder, that it will have some sort of uh, a cause, equal and opposite reaction, sort of a, an effect. Mm -hmm. Great. I, you know, so I mentioned uh, earlier at the beginning of our call that a lot has changed over the last couple of months. And in particular, in the last month, there have been a lot of removals of Occupy protesters from um, their particular sites. I think Boston just happened this past week. Uh, mm -hmm. And I'm wondering um, if you have any thoughts, um, not that the movement is over um, it by any means, but as these changes are happening, what you think that, what do you, what do you think is uh, the resonant message or is, uh, what, what, what do you think is the re resonant message and potentially what do you think will become of, of it? Well, I, I, think, I think there's something, something important, important about, about the, the camps, camps being, being shut, shut down, down by, by Quote, quote the forces, the forces that be, be. Um, be because, because a movement, a movement that, that is trying, trying to gain to sort of immediate traction, traction in my in mind, my loses mind, a bit of its weight, weight if that, that doesn't, doesn't happen, happen and they just stay set up. up. Um, it, it, it loses a little bit of its gravitas. Um, um, 
So uh, I, I, I think that, that there's, 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 there's something important about the camps being shut down. I don't know that I explicitly agree or disagree with it, um, but I think it, if nothing else, should be a, a call to the people that are active in the movements, both in the areas where the camps have been shut down and in the areas where they're still going strong, um, that they need to to sort of refine and redirect their message a little bit. Um, I think there's there's something to be said for um, like a mass body at the beginning, um, but one one of I think the big the, one of the troubles that I've had with the Occupy movement from the beginning is that there wasn't ever a unified message. Like this is explicitly what we want, um, and many many many, many, many people, people that I've talked with have said, well, that's part of the power of it is that. Um, you know, it's really pulling in a lot of different people and et cetera. So, um, I think that's true. I think that's valid. And I think now that they have attained the masses, they need to, um, redirect and, and refine what it is that they're trying to do because simply being in a park is a large action, but it, it needs to go, it needs to keep moving forward. Okay. Great.